Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We are continuing this week on the rebuild of that 1940s Craftsman drill press. Well, the next thing I want to work on, seeing how we just finished reconditioning the drill press table, is to go ahead and recondition this base. Although not as challenging as the drill press table fixturing this base to the milling machine shouldn't be all that difficult. I have this piece of quarter inch steel I bought for another project that is exactly the right size that I need for this. Since I can clamp this steel plate anywhere onto the mill table, all I need to do is attach the drill press base to the plate and we should be good to go. Nothing here needs to be a precision fit, but I would like to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to use transfer punches to find where I need to drill the holes in the fixture plate. I don't need to make these punch marks very deep, so I'm just going to tap these with a ball peen. When I move the base out of the way, I'll circle them with a sharpie. Now I can make those transferred punches a little bit deeper. And just to be sure that I don't end up adding bozo marks to the mill table, I'll move the y-axis so that the drill ends up landing in a slot. I'll move the fixture plate around by hand and get it lined up underneath the drill. And then tighten a couple of toe clamps to keep it secured to the mill table. Just to be sure that the bolts I use to fasten the base to the plate don't end up hitting the mill table, I'll put the whole thing on some one, two, three block. For the hardware here, I'm just using some short lengths of threaded rod with a couple of nuts on either end.
using some studs, riser blocks, and some toe clamps here. I will clamp this fixture plate down securely to the mill table. I do want to indicate the top of the base here. Again, it's not a precision surface, but I don't want to take off any more material than I need to. It turns out that there's only about seven or eight thousandths of difference, and I intend to take off more than that anyway, or about that. So I didn't find any need to shim this. Well, mostly just because I want this to go a little bit faster than the drill press table. I'm using a two inch three flute facing mill for this operation. I suppose the fly cutter may leave a better finish. You don't have as many mating lines, but it is extraordinarily slow and this I can move back and forth with some uh, decent speeds. I've got my depth of cut set to about five thousandths of an inch and I'm going to try to use the shop vac here to capture some of the dust that milling this cast iron can create. However, I was still getting peppered with cast iron dust, so the shop vac was probably a good idea, but just didn't seem to work out. I guess I'll have to deal with cleaning up the mess. Well, the first two passes, everything seemed to look great, but something uh, started going a little bit haywire for me on the third pass. I started getting some deeper swirls in the finish than I was getting on the first two. Well, I wrote off those issues on the third pass as maybe some problems with the surface of the base. But as I get further into this fourth pass, the problem seemed to persist. And you can see here at the end of the fourth pass where it gets even worse than all of the other parts combined. But I opted to go ahead and press on. I only had one more pass to finish the first go and then hopefully I'll be able to rectify it when I skim over this again. We'll get the shop vac going here so we can clean up some of this dust and we can examine the surface finish and maybe come up with a plan of attack to address these issues. Well, these defects are actually rather tactile. They're pretty deep and I'm confused as to why they're only showing up in parts of the finish. 
Well, taking a look at each one of these inserts, and they all seem to be okay. Now, this last one here, I mean, maybe you could say that it's got a bit of a chip in it, but it's borderline. So I will go ahead and rotate it one tooth anyway. These were brand new inserts, and hopefully that will solve the problem. Well, we went ahead and set the depth of cut to another 5 thousandths, so we'll start this first pass of the second run and see if we get any improvements. Well, that first pass was looking fine until right at the end when it started doing this again. And of course, I'm a glutton for punishment, so, you know, if it doesn't work the first three times, try it the fourth. Well, I'm giving up on this face mill. I'm not exactly sure where the problem is coming from. In hindsight, I'm wondering if the collet wasn't tight enough and maybe the mill was pulling out of the collet. Well, so I got the fly cutter back into the mill. So I guess we're going to take the slow road home. Um, but I feel like the finish that I was getting on the drill press table was at least satisfactory whereas what I'm getting with the face mill is not.
Well, I can't seem to win for trying. I am not happy with the surface finish again. The second pass just wasn't looking good. The first pass looked pretty poor, but I figured I'd be doing a cleanup pass anyway. But I think I need to take a look at the insert and maybe rotate it to a new corner. Well, so far that is an improvement, but we'll see how it goes the rest of the way. Well, I, I ran that most recent pass across the table base a little deeper in order to clean up some of the issues that I was having, uh, which means now I need to cut the other side to match. Well, my battery died just as it was finishing up that last bit. And you can see here it did not clear up some of the issues with the face mill. And although the rest of the finish isn't bad, it's not great either. It's not as smooth as I think it should be. Um, but I, I have an idea. I'm going to take it off camera and see if I can come up with something a little bit better. Well, I made one significant change and then ran uh, two more passes across this and I think, I hope, you can see the results. This is immensely better than any finish that I've been able to um, obtain to date. It is baby smooth and has a really nice satin sheen to it. It's not that mirrored polished that I was hoping for, but considering this is probably some cheap cast uh, material, I'm gonna take it. 
Well, I'm hand holding this here on my iPhone, but this is the insert I had been using in the tool up until that most recent change. This is a CCMT carbide insert with a 0.8 millimeter radius. What I changed to was this CCGT carbide insert that's usually used for aluminum with a 0.4 millimeter radius on the cutting edge. And I bought 10 of these from a seller on eBay for less than 20 bucks. I am very happy with the results. Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.